hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. You might have heard of a disease called cystic fibrosis before. Cystic fibrosis. And cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease. And it's a genetic disease because what actually happens is there's a certain protein which doesn't get produced anymore because there's a mutation within a gene. And this is the normal actual C CFTR gene that makes a, this channel open. So what happens usually is this, these chlorine ions will pass through this protein channel. And that means that there, there's no buildup of mucus. So this mucus will, will be able to move into the cell and not build up outside. So that's usually the case. So usually this protein will attach here, basically, and open the channel, right? So this protein's job is to open the channel and let these chlorine ions go outside to make sure that there's no buildup of mucus. Now the problem is, in a mutant gene, this protein doesn't get produced anymore. Or it gets produced, but it doesn't work as it should. So usually we have this protein which would then open this channel, but with the mutant version, it has changed the shape, it doesn't fit anymore, and thereby the channel stays closed, so it stays shut. And problem is, you can see these chlorine ions, they'll build up, and because they're not going outside, the mucus will actually build up outside. So here it's building up. And people with cystic fibrosis, they have a lot of mucus inside their respiratory system, their breathing system, and they usually can actually die from that eventually. Now, that's a simple mutation which has changed the f function of the human body. This is a really crippling disease, genetic disease, and it just happens because of one mutation, one gene, which means a certain protein doesn't get, doesn't get produced anymore. Now, I've tied all this into the actual dot point. The dot point itself says students will process information from, from secondary sources to construct a flow chart that shows that changes in DNA sequences can result in changes in selectivity. So we have to talk about how changes in DNA sequence can result in changes in selectivity. And this was one example, you know, where this protein that's produced doesn't fit anymore and thereby the cell works differently and that can cause bad consequences for us. So first what we have here, we go for this flow chart. So the flow chart itself is just where we have steps and then we have the arrows pointing direction of the actual process. So we have our original DNA strand here. Right? So we would have had these two strands. Beforehand they were connected with our hydrogen bonds, but during replication or during polypeptide production, these hydrogen bonds would get broken to make sure we can actually make a copy of it. Now usually these bases, let's say they usually, they usually code for these amino acids. Again, the names are important. Let's say orange, blue, and yellow amino acids. So the AAT um, codes for this one, CGT codes for this one, and AGC codes for this one. Now let's say there's a mutation in the actual sequence. Let's say there is a deletion mutation. So we are deleting this T is not there anymore, and now everything moves along, and now it's AAC instead of AAC, so let's say this will code for a completely different type of amino acid, maybe a green one. And now obviously because this triplet has changed, this one has also changed, now it's GTA, and GTA as opposed to CGT, this used to code for blue one, now it might code for a dark blue one. So again, a different type of amino acid. And usually, again, you can imagine deletion means that all the other ones that were here, all the, the bases back up, so there might be an additional one here as well, just not one that may, might not be there, might not meant to be there. So now instead of being AGC, it's GCT. Again, this might code for, let's say, a pink amino acid. So you can see this one mutation has caused a completely different type of amino acids to being produced, this deletion mutation. All this happens now is we, we will make a copy. So a mRNA will come in and make a copy of these bases. 
and then go to ribosome to get it translated. So here that was transcription here. And then after transcription, we will have translation. So we've got our bases which we'll get coded for. And what happens is we're going to produce these amino acids with that code. And that will be our end product. Right, so that mutation has changed the actual sequence and it's not only sequence but the actual types of amino acids that would get produced. And that means that not only this polypeptide will be different, but the resulting structure of the protein will also be different. Because it's all like the, the reason the structure itself is determined by the actual sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide. So because that's different, you're gonna have a different protein. So for example here we might have had in our so this is our new protein structure. So this was maybe the old one, this was the ideal version, the original version. But now that everything's changed, the new structure is different. Right? And what kind of consequence could that have? Well it could have pretty bad consequences. Like we mentioned earlier, we have let's say here we have, you know, this is our what was it called again? It was called the CFTR channel. This is the CFTR channel. Now we need to have maybe let's say this is our original protein that would open the channel. This protein would open the channel. But the problem is now this protein isn't actually there. So this would open, right? So this would fit into this part, which means it would open the channel. That would be perfect. Because of the mutation, we actually have this kind of protein getting produced. And this doesn't fit, so it's not going to open the channel. And that's why the mucus would build up. And this would be one example of how a change in DNA sequence can lead to a change in selectivity. And the other example would be the easy one as well. This would be the enzyme. Right? So this might be our enzyme here, E for enzyme. This would be our substrate. So usually we have this perfect fit, or almost perfect fit, where the substrate will then get broken down by the enzyme. But let's say the enzyme, because enzymes are also protein, right? So these enzymes will get produced by same way as this protein would have been produced. Would have been produced through this sequence right now, with DNA going into polypeptide chain, going into protein. But if there's a, a mutation within the actual enzyme sequence, of amino acids, that means the shape will also be different. So now the substrate can't fit, can't be broken down anymore. So again, change in, in shape or change in function because of a change in the sequence of DNA has led to a change in selectivity. These enzymes won't be able to work anymore. We're going to have a different type of selectivity because of it. In most cases, that's obviously bad for the cell. So again, it says constructed a flowchart. So you could have original DNA, then a error to mutated DNA, and you could say that happened because, let's say, UV light would have been the cause of it. That mutated DNA leads to a new polypeptide, and that would have been caused by combination of transcription plus translation. So that new sequence has been transcripted and translated to produce a polypeptide chain. This is different. This new polypeptide chain will lead to a new protein structure and a new protein structure would lead to decreased uh, it's just a change in the change in the cell activity. Sometimes it's bad but it can sometimes also be good. So most mutations are bad, but there are some good mutations as well. As so that was the main gist of this top point, you should know how to construct one of these flow charts and also obviously be able to understand them as well. But yeah, hopefully that was useful. Thank you for watching.